the model viewer editor. The model viewer editor is a great tool for putting together a simple 3D model viewing page and learning about aspects of the model viewer web component. Go to modelviewer.dev forward slash editor to get started. Drag the model you created in the previous video. If you skipped it then just use medieval-chair.glb from the assets folder of resources you downloaded in the first video of the course. You should have the chair square on in the main 3D viewing area. Over on the right is the panel allowing us to fine tune the viewer. We'll start with the pen tab. The lighting applied to the scene comes from two sources. One is a directional light where the position of the light is immaterial. Only the direction of the light counts. This is rather like the sun which is so far away all the rays coming from it are effectively parallel. The other source is an environment image. This is used as though wrapped onto a sphere or a cube and the code finds the nearest pixel on this image and uses it when calculating the light for each pixel in the render. Try switching the environment image to see dramatic changes to the render. You can even use the environment image as a skybox. That's a background made up from the spherical image map or cube map. Leave this unchecked though for this example, otherwise you get a floating chair. On this panel you can also add a hotspot. Click the add hotspot button and then click on the seat of the chair. In the label panel enter medieval chair. Now the hotspot follows the spot clicked around and disappears when the hotspot is no longer in view. Now move to the camera tab. Rotate the chair to a three quarter view and press save current as initial. Now the view will use this angle as the starting point. When we export the scene this angle will be grabbed as what model viewer calls a poster image. That's a still image that's displayed while the 3D model downloads. By setting an initial orientation the view will blend seamlessly from the still bitmap image to the 3D rendered view. Now move on to the artist palette. In this tab you can update the materials your model uses. Many models will use several different materials for different bits of the model. The example we're working on here uses a single material, Lambert 1. Lambert is the name of a type of lighting model named after Johann Heinrich Lambert, a Swiss-French mathematician born in 1728. The theory behind lots of computer graphics mathematics was often devised by polymaths from the 18th and 19th centuries, predating computers by a hundred years or more. I often wonder how amazed they'd be to see their academic theories being used to display a first person shooter game on an Xbox. Despite being called Lambert, Model Viewer actually uses a physically based render, PBR shader. This gives a much better result. Notice the base colour is built from a factor value which is a colour and a texture. If you change the colour it will be reflected in the rendered view. You can change the image used but I recommend leaving this as is. Metallic roughness panel is where you set up the PBR surface inputs, metalness and roughness. They share the same texture map if one is used with the metalness using the blue channel and roughness the green. Remember currently Model Viewer uses the library 3GS to display the model. All models are GLB formatted and so use the material class Mesh Standard Material from the 3GS library. While it isn't essential to know this to create great web pages that use Model Viewer, it helps to have a deeper understanding if render problems arise. Adjusting the metallic and roughness factors has a dramatic effect on the final render. I recommend putting metallic at 0.6 and roughness at 0.7. The final values for each pixel in the render for metalness will be the texel from the texture used at the point on the chair times the metallic factor. Metallic parts of the chair will be less shiny as a result of reducing the metallic factor. 
Because this example uses a map to control the output, the wood parts are unaffected by changing the metallic factor because the map is set to zero, black, for the wooden parts and anything times zero is still zero. The metal parts are one on the map, white, and so the final metalness value will be metallic factor times one. Roughness are just how shiny, or to be literal, how unshiny a surface is. In other words, the lower the roughness, the smoother, and so shinier the surface. As we rotate the chair, we see light reflecting off the lumps in the surface. These lumps are provided not by geometry, but by a normal map. The light hitting a surface is calculated for each pixel, sometimes referred to as a fragment in the final rendered image. Think of a normal as a stick pointing out of the surface. How light combines with this stick's direction is based partly on the angle between the stick and the light direction. A normal map is an image that's applied to the surface and describes how to alter the default normal at every position on the geometry using this material. For this example, we'll just leave the normal as is. The emissive property can light up parts of the model regardless of lighting. Without a texture, it will affect the entire model, so best to leave the factor as black. Occlusion is a way of making the ambient light, that's coming from the environment image, less in the creases. It uses the red channel of the same texture as metalness and roughness. Finally, return to the first tab and press Download Scene. Your model with the material update is saved along with HTML, poster image and the selected environment image. This is all bundled into a zip file and saved to your download folder. Find the file, it will have the name model, unzip it. You can't just double click the index.html page to view it. Instead, you'll need to use a web server. That's because the page opens external assets. The poster image, the GLB file and the environment image and external assets are not allowed if the URL uses the file prefix. Hopefully you followed the steps to prepare for the course in video 1. If you move the unzip folder to the folder where you added the GitHub assets for this course in the first video, then you can open VS Code right click index.html in the model folder and use open with live server. Alternatively, if you installed web server for Chrome, you can open that and use the choose folder button selecting the model folder. Now just press the blue local host link to see your handiwork. The Model Viewer Editor is a great introduction to using the Model Viewer web component. Now you have your first web page working. In the next section we'll look at many more examples. It's going to be fun. <laughs>